Today, let us give glory to God with the subject entitled, Heavenly Mother Said, Love One Another. When we summarize all the teachings of our Heavenly Mother, we come to the conclusion, love one another. So I ask all our Zion family members to follow this teaching of Heavenly Mother fully on this earth. Let's take a look at John, chapter 13, verse 34. It reads, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must do what? You must love one another. This teaching was given 2,000 years ago. And in this age of the Holy Spirit too, Father came and granted us the same teaching. Father put the new covenant in that teaching, and Heavenly Mother came as the reality of the new covenant. Then now, we ought to put into practice the teaching, love one another. However, loving others is not easy. Living in this tough world, I hope we will all understand this difficult thing through one story. A long time ago, an anthropologist explored a remote African village to study the origin of humans, the birth of civilization, and many other things. There, he met some children of a tribe. He had a fun time with those children. One day, he made a suggestion to the children. I'd like to play a game with you today. Is it okay? The children said yes. He said, this is how you play the game. I'm going to put a basket of strawberries about 50 meters from here. Whoever runs fast and gets there first can have all the strawberries. This was his suggestion. Of course, there is a big variety of fruits in Africa, but strawberries were not common in that region. So he had the children stand in one line and gave them the starting signal. But none of the children started running. Instead, they looked at each other with hesitation and held each other's hand. Then they finally started running together, holding each other's hands. They arrived at the spot where the basket of strawberries were put. They sat around it and began to eat them, having a fun conversation and laughing together. The anthropologist thought those African children were very interesting. So he asked, I gave the rules of the game, didn't I? Whoever wins could eat those strawberries placed under the tree all alone. So why didn't you try to win? Then all the children said, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a Bantu term meaning, I am because you are. All the children said, Ubuntu, meaning, I am because you are. This means, our community always comes first, and I will never take just mine. As the anthropologist asked, you could have won the first place and had the strawberries all to yourself. Why did you all run, holding each other's hand? 
One of the children stood up and answered, Everybody could run fast, and anybody could be the winner. But then all the other kids would be sad, except that one kid. If all the kids are sad, how can the winner feel happy alone? When we think about this story carefully, although it is a story about what happened in one African village, we can understand why God tells us in this age too that we should be united with one another and become one. When God tells us to be one, it is not because we are one person, but it is a teaching that we should become one although we are many. Heavenly Mother always gives us this teaching. When we think about this story with the words of John chapter 13, we can understand a little why our God has told us to love one another. Some scholars say, when one person is happy, five people around that person can be happy together. Everybody, the Sabbath day is a day to worship God and to give thanks and glory to God. Also, it is a day of joy, isn't it? We are keeping this Sabbath day with joy. When one person is happy, he can make five people around him happy. That's why our God the Father and Mother tell us to be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. We ought to keep this joyful Sabbath day by loving one another. When we take a look at all the teachings of God, we can see they are concluded in love. It shouldn't be some happiness or joy for us alone, but we should all win the first place together, holding our hands just like those African children. Just like the expression Ubuntu in the Bantu language in Africa, we preach from the spirit of love that thinks, I am because you are. I believe preaching comes from this love. That's why Jesus emphasized love the most when he was on the earth and gave many teachings about love in the New Testament. He said, God is love, and you should love one another just as I loved you. From all these verses, we can see Jesus utter love many times. Then how can we complete love? We find the answer in Matthew chapter 28. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. In this command, we can see that Jesus didn't want only his disciples to come to heaven. But what was his will? He wanted us to do Ubuntu. In other words, he wanted us to come to heaven all together, holding each other's hand. That's why Jesus said, Go to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We should not go to heaven alone, but should go together. God granted us a way to put this love into practice, that is preaching. Can we preach without love? If we preach without love, we become weary shortly after. Our bags feel heavy and our footsteps that we take to preach feel heavy too. 
However, if we do it with the spirit of faith, I am because you are, and preach to seven billion people, understanding God's love fully, then we will never have any difficulties. Our footsteps can never feel heavy. We will all hold each other's hand and run together so that there won't be any winner or loser, but everyone can be a winner. In this age of the Holy Spirit, let us have the spirit of love to share the awards God has prepared. Heavenly Mother allowed us this teaching along with the mission to preach to seven billion people. And Jesus, too, gave this teaching 2,000 years ago. I believe that it is a precious teaching to eventually realize the true love for mankind. Let's see one more verse in Romans chapter 10. Let us make efforts together so that we won't be going to heaven alone, but go to heaven altogether. Romans chapter 10, verse 11. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then? Can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Here, it means how can they believe in the Savior, accept Him, and receive Him if no one preaches to them? To let us share love, God granted us a precious command that is preaching a truly great and holy mission. Let's continue with verse 15. And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. It means that God's love will be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, doesn't it? It also contains the meaning that preaching cannot be done unless we have love in our footsteps. Our everlasting kingdom of heaven is truly near. We shouldn't try to be the only winner and eat the strawberries all alone, but hold each other's hand. I am because you are. I am because our Zion is. I am because our heavenly family is. With this kind of faith, our Zion members in the global village are all carrying out the mission of preaching to 7 billion people this year. In Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, North America, South America, and in Korea, all the family members of Zion are united and are making efforts to complete this gospel mission. Father and mother have entrusted to us, having faith and love to lead all people of the global village to dwell in the grace of God. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. 
When God said preach the word, he also meant to share love with all people in the world. Can we go to preach the word without love? Never. The high priest and the Levite left the man who was dying. Think of the story from the parable of the Good Samaritan. They didn't care about what other people faced. They didn't show any concern for the man who fell into the hands of robbers and would die without someone's care. Why is that? Because they didn't have love. They didn't have love to save a life. They only thought of their faces, their positions, and their situations. They only thought about the time and expenses they would lose because of that man and thought about how people would look at them and they didn't want to be bothered. Thinking of these things, they just passed by the man who had fallen into the hands of robbers. They regarded the man as someone who had nothing to do with them. However, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus told us that this Samaritan was different. Jesus said, the Samaritan gave up all the plans for his trip in order to save this person and focused on saving his life. Go and do likewise. Preach the word. It means we should save the world by preaching the word, doesn't it? Let's continue with verse 2. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Here, he is explaining about all the time he has preached the gospel. He is confessing, I followed God's will. I've put the love God has taught me into practice, and I've led the dying souls into the truth of the new life, and I have no regrets. Now the heavenly crown of righteousness is waiting for me. This is what is in store for me. Everybody. I hope that we will all be able to say something like what Apostle Paul said at the last moment we leave the earth. I finished the race. I have preached hard. And according to God's teaching to love mankind, I fully put love into practice by preaching as God loved us, even to the point of death on the cross. We can see Apostle Paul express his confidence in 2 Timothy chapter 4. I finished the race. I have no regrets about it. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Everybody, Heavenly Mother gave us the Heaven's command to preach to seven billion people. When we carry out this work, we should know that love is contained in preaching. Should we just run fast and become the winner and eat the strawberries in the basket all alone? When they held each other's hand, how many bodies did they become? They all became one body. So whoever got there first, they could all be the winner. With this thought, we must complete the brotherly love of Zion, 
which father and mother want, in beautiful unity and harmony, until we find all our lost brothers and sisters, and fully complete the mission of preaching to Samaria and to the ends of the earth, which has been entrusted to us. As Heavenly Father and Mother showed us in the parable of talents, what mattered was not whether they gained a lot or a little, but just for the fact that they participated in the work together. The Master said, Well done, faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. This is from the parable of the talents, isn't it? In the story about the Good Samaritan, Jesus didn't tell us to learn the examples of the priest and of the Levite, who just passed by the man with folded arms. Explaining about the Samaritan, who made much effort to save a life, Jesus said, Go and do like the Samaritan. Although you know this parable very well, let us ruminate on it once again. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verse 30. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Today, we need to engrave on our hearts once again Heavenly Father and Mother's will to preach to seven billion people in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God said, go and do likewise. From the spiritual point of view, all people in this world are like the man who fell into the hands of robbers then we ought to preach to them with love like the Samaritan. We shouldn't just pass them by like the priest or the Levite, thinking, well, it is them who aren't going to be saved, not me. Instead, we must take pity on the unfortunate situation of those people like the Samaritan. People don't know whether they are going to hell or to heaven, because they don't know the truth, they are blind spiritually. Being blind spiritually, they keep walking forward, not knowing where they are going. If there is a cliff ahead of them, if there is danger or a trap waiting for them, or if there is a pit in front of them, when we see them, we shouldn't just think, well, it's going to be them who are going to die, not me. But let them know what's there by telling them. It's dangerous there, so you need to go around. We ought to hold their hands, teach them, and let them feel it, don't we? Heavenly Father and Mother's will is to share our love with all the seven billion people in the world. Heavenly Father and Mother loved us even to the point of death. So we should share that love with all people this year so that all seven billion people can repent and come back into the arms of father and mother. Let's make this year such a glorious year. Today, we studied once again that the true meaning of love that Heavenly Mother has taught us can be shown and fulfilled by preaching.
Let's move on to John chapter 13, verse 34. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The relationship between the new command and love in John chapter 13, verse 34, is an extension of the Passover. When we look at the Passover carefully, we can see that God's holy love is contained in it. To save us who sinned in heaven and became sinners, Heavenly Father came to this earth and fed us with His flesh and shed His precious blood and let us drink it. Father and mother sacrificed themselves for us. We should be able to share such sacrificial love of God with all the seven billion people of the world who will come to Zion. Let us always remember the new command, love one another, and preach the new covenant and mother with all our strength and open the glorious way to heaven for all people. Hoping that we will all be able to do that. I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.